This is Wretched Radio with Todd Freer. Hey, where does the Holy Spirit fit into this hermeneutics business anyway? Good question. This is Wretched Radio. The Holy Spirit illuminates Christians. The question is, what does that word mean? And I don't think it means what you think it means. A lot of people believe that the Holy Spirit will give you the right interpretation. Can he do that? Of course he can. Does he do that? I suspect he most certainly does. Is that the normal operation procedure for understanding the Bible? And the answer is no. How do I know? First of all, we are to be workmen, rightly cutting the word of truth. You got to work on it. You got to understand how to do it. You've got to have some rules and some tools, and you got to study and use your noggin that God gave to you. And we also then, therefore, understand the doctrine of illumination correctly. Words have meanings. Wow. How many times do we get ourselves into hot water when we don't take the time to stop and ask, what does that word mean? What are you talking about exactly? When you say the doctrine of illumination, it implies that the Holy Spirit, he's just going to give you all the info that you need. And that is clearly not the way that he always operates. I just have one word to make that case. Denominations. You've got good believers in all kinds of denominations with different interpretations. And they're truly believers. So why doesn't the Holy Spirit straighten out my Presbyterian friends when it comes to pedo-baptism? Huh? I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? Did I just? (laughs) Presbyterians, they're believers. They're brothers and sisters. They differ with me on the issue of baptism. So is one of us lacking illumination? No. We're all illuminated, but we just need to understand what that doctrine actually is means. And don't panic if you're thinking, well, anything would be less if he doesn't tell me what I'm supposed to know about this verse. Because that seems almost like that. Well, that would be the loftiest thing. If God would just, wow, make it clear to me. And again, I suspect he does. And we should pray to him, not for the right interpretation, but for wisdom and for stamina and for humility to submit to what the text means, and to read other sources in humility to see what the text meant to them because they had the Holy Spirit illuminating them too. And so it's not less, I will try to make the case, it is not less if he doesn't give you that right interpretation. The doctrine of illumination is still amazing, even if it doesn't contain that component. From the Master's Seminary, If you want to do some quick reads on theological subjects, I don't know that you can do better than the Master Seminary blog. And this maybe is my favorite part about the whole blog at at the Master Seminary. It's tms.edu, tms.edu. This is, (laughs) what is the Holy Spirit's role in Bible study? Is is the title of this article by Brad Clausen. It was written February 25th, 2020. Estimated reading time, 11 minutes. I like that. I don't know why. But isn't it funny? This, this to me, this almost has to be some sort of well, surrender to the uh, short attention span that the world has. It's over 10 minutes, so I'm probably not going to read it. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's, there's that. So they try to tell you, don't worry, not going to take you long. Just, don't worry, don't panic. You're not going to miss a sitcom if you read this. <laughs> so what exactly is the doctrine of illumination? Here's what it is not. The Holy Spirit's ministry of illumination is not the ministry of revelation. Revelation, the revealing of what was previously hidden from human understanding. We, we, we already have a word. There's, 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 he's not speaking new things. Two, the Spirit's ministry of illumination is not his ministry of inspiration. The Bible is inspired. It's done. The Holy Spirit's ministry of illumination does not occur apart from the Bible. So if you want to be illuminated, you need the Bible. It's inseparable. Why? Who wrote the Bible? Well, God did. God is three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Which one of the persons inspired the word? Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inspired the word. He illuminates through what he is already inspired. So anything that we do that is inspirational, really to be 
completely, totally pinpoint accurate, it's from the Bible. Anything else is not inspired in a theological sense. He works with what he has already done. It's inseparable from his ministry of sanctification. And according to the prayer of Jesus, sanctification does not occur apart from God's word. So everything that the Holy Spirit does in your life is surrounded by the word, involves the word. Who sanctifies you? The Holy Spirit is the sanctifier. He is the one that makes you holier. How does he do it? Through his word. The Spirit's ministry of illumination does not change the nature or message of the biblical text. It's not the word that needs to be improved. It's the reader that needs to be improved. So since it was inscripturated, the word of God possessed all the qualities necessary for it to be read and comprehended. So when the Holy Spirit illuminates, he's not shining a light on a dark and mysterious text. He's shining a light in our darkened brains. <laughs> it's not the word that needs help. We're the ones. So when he illuminates, he's not illuminating the word per se. He's illuminating our brains to get the word. And we need to understand what it means to illuminate. He's shining the light on the reader, not the text. Removing the cataracts from our spiritual eyes. The Spirit's ministry of illumination does not ensure inerrant interpretation. It does not impart perfect knowledge. It empowers us in the pursuit of that knowledge, 2 Peter 3.18. That maybe stings a little bit. Wait, why, why doesn't he do that? And the answer is because, well, it's just because of the way that he does it. He wants us to use our brains. And isn't that better for us? Let's just say that God's rule for illuminating us was just to give us the correct interpretation. Question, how much of that word would you then study? How long would you spend wrangling with a text? Third, would you ever memorize anything? Fourth, preparing for sermons? Nope, just illuminate me. How sanctified would you become if the Holy Spirit works with his word? If you just go, okay, Lord, give, just give it to me. I'm Okay, yeah, okay, got it. Uh, that's the descending into hell thing. Okay, good. Would you appreciate God? Would you remember God's word as much? No, it's better for us that we have to work and strive and struggle and have tools. So Proverbs 2, 2, make your ear attentive to wisdom, inclining your heart to understanding. You some have action. to work. It's, it, it helps you. And if God just dropped it into your noggin, you, I don't think we'd appreciate God as much. Isn't it a... Okay, I was, I was texting with a buddy, uh, and, he, and he was saying, do you ever see something in the Bible where you just go, Pwah! Yeah. what is that? All what is that time. connection? And so it was, it was in Romans, uh, uh, the, 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 the law of God silences the mouth, brings the whole world guilty before God. I was at Romans 2 or 3. Yep. The law of God zips it. In other words, blah, blah, blah. Hey, I'm a good person. Hey, I've done a lot of stuff. Hey, I know what I'm doing. Hey, I don't. And the law comes along. He goes, shut it down. You have no defense for yourself. You have nothing to say in your defense before the judge. You are guilty as charged. Isaiah 53, as a lamb that is silent before the slaughterers. Talking about whom? The Messiah so when Jesus uttered not a word before his accusers, was that in fulfillment of Isaiah 53 connected to Romans 2 or 3? Because Jesus, acting as the guilty one, had nothing to say in his defense. While Jesus Christ was not a sinner, he stood in the sinner's place, and he acted like the sinner without a defense, without any sort of blah, 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 blah. No, you shouldn't be doing this. Hey, I peeled a lot of people. Hey, what about? Nope. He acted in your stead, and as a lamb is silent, so too Jesus Christ was. And he was like, huh, okay, look, I, I, I don't know for sure. I, I, it seems pretty sound, but it's like, whoa, the elegance of the Bible. Look at how this whole thing just fits together. Amazing. Do you think he'd have that feeling if he didn't have to study it? Not at all. There's diamonds scattered in every page. We get to find them. The doctrine of illumination, it will help us 
to study hard and do it right. The Spirit's ministry of illumination is not limited to certain members of the church. That's good news. The Spirit's ministry of illumination does not negate the need for pastors and teachers. The Spirit's ministry of illumination does not negate the need for discipline study. Be diligent. Present yourself as a workman. That's what illumination is, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, whereby he develops in the believer a clearer understanding of, a stronger certainty in, a deeper love for, and a greater obedience to the meaning of the text of Scripture. And that's a lot. Do you know why you love the word? The illuminating work of the Holy Spirit. Do you know why you apply the word? The illuminating work of the Holy Spirit. Do you know why you just adore that book? It is because the illuminating work of the Holy Spirit. Nope. Doesn't give you the correct interpretation necessarily. Instead, he teaches you to obey it. That's a pretty good doctrine. This is Wretched Radio. Um, Houston, I think we have a few problems here. Go ahead, Wretched One. Besides the fact I'm wearing a cardboard helmet, Houston. You have got one of the biggest false teachers in the universe. Are you kidding? He is so rich. Uh, How rich is he, wretched one? (laughs) I can see his house from here.